Hey everyone, a bit of news in France this week as Nicolas Sarkozy was found guilty of trying to bribe a judge. I'm guessing it was an actual judge as well, but he is a former politician, so maybe it was a judge in the French version of Strictly. Or perhaps the X Factor, he is an ex-president after all and he's been married three times. The main news story, of course, was from America, though, where the culture wars and cancel culture continue. This time it was the beloved children's book, The Cat in the Hat, that's been branded racist and offensive. And I'd have actually thought that Dr. Seuss's works were exactly what the woke left would want these days. It has, after all, that one with the characters Thing 1 and Thing 2. And I thought those were the names that those idiots wanted us to use instead of Mum or Dad. You know, I was quite tempted to just draw the cat this week along with a Dr. Seuss-starred poem, something along the lines of, No, I will not wear that mask. I will not do the things you ask. I will not wear it on my face. I will not wear it any place. Go back home to your safe space. You really are a sad disgrace. And so on. But of course, the big story this week was Harry and Meghan and their interview, which isn't out yet, but it will be by the time this is posted, I guess. And it doesn't matter because I've decided to respect Harry and Meghan's request for privacy, not bother watching the thing. The only way it would even be entertaining would be if Oprah went on the offensive and asked Harry if all his clothes got lost in shipping, and that's why he only ever wears that grey suit with beige shoes these days. Maybe crack a joke about if he felt relieved when the chauffeur-driven car made it safely to the studio. Yeah, they probably have to pay that guy a lot of money, because being the chauffeur of Harry and Meghan is probably up in that top five list of dangerous jobs, just between Iraqi security contractor and gamekeeper in the Congo. I think stand it will almost certainly have just been the pair of them wallowing in deluded self-pity, and the only way it would really be worth watching would be if occasionally cut to the Duke of Edinburgh doing a Gogglebox-style series of reaction shots. You know, I do continue to find it amazing, though, that William's wife Kate had topless photographs shown in a French magazine, and yet she's considered the classy one out of the pair of them. And I wouldn't mind if Harry and Meghan just wanted to live a quiet life of luxury in Santa Monica and keep themselves to themselves, but I'm not going to be lectured to on climate science and history by someone with two middling A-levels. If the pair of them were a music album, they'd be that U2 album that Apple downloaded onto everyone's phone a while back. And actually, that's a good point. Who's more annoying, them or Bono? You know, I guess Bono has the edge. Get it? Anyway, see you next week. If you like these, click subscribe.